The Nectar of Devotion, The Complete Science of Bhakti Yoga, a summary study of Srila Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Chapter 13, Five Potent Forms of Devotional Service. Rupa Goswami has stated that five kinds of devotional activities, namely, residing in Mathura, worshipping the deity of the Lord, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, serving a devotee, and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, are so potent that a small attachment for any one of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy even in a neophyte. Regarding worship of the form of the Lord or deity, Rupa Goswami has written the following verse, quote, My dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy the company of your friends within this material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna, who is standing on the bank of Keshigat, a bathing place in Vrindavan. He is known as Govinda, and his eyes are very enchanting. He is playing upon his flute, and on his head there is a peacock feather, and his whole body is illuminated by the moonlight of, in the sky." Unquote. The purport of this verse is that if someone becomes attached to the Sri Murti, a deity of Krishna, by worshipping at home, then he will forget his relationships of so-called friendship, love, and society. Thus, it is the duty of every householder to install deities of the Lord at home and to begin the process of worshipping, along with all of his family members. This will save everyone from such unwanted activities as going to clubs, cinemas, and dancing parties, and smoking, drinking, etc. All such nonsense will be forgotten if one stresses the worship of the deities at home. Rupa Goswami further writes, quote, My dear foolish friend, I think that you have already heard some of the auspicious Srimad Bhagavatam which desire the, which decries seeking the results of fruitive activities, economic development, and liberation. I think that now it is certain that gradually the verses of the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam describing the pastimes of the Lord will enter your ears and go into your heart. Unquote. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that unless one has the ability to throw out, just like garbage, the fruitive results of ritualistic ceremonies, economic development, and becoming one with the Supreme, or salvation, one cannot understand Srimad Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam deals exclusively with devotional service. Only one who studies Srimad Bhagavatam in the spirit of renunciation can understand the pastimes of the Lord which are described in the 10th canto. In other words, one should not try to understand the topics of the 10th canto, such as the Rasa Lila, love dance, unless he has spontaneous attraction for Srimad Bhagavatam. One must be situated in pure devotional service before he can relish Srimad Bhagavatam as it is. In the above two verses of Rupa Goswami, there are some metaphorical analogies that indirectly condemn the association of materialistic society, friendship, and love. People are generally attracted to society, friendship, and love, and they make elaborate arrangements and strong endeavors to develop these material contaminations. But to see the Sri Murtis of Radha and Krishna is to forget such endeavors for material association. Rupa Goswami composed his verse in such a way that he was seemingly praising the material association of friendship and love and was condemning the audience of Srimurti or Govinda. This metaphorical analogy is constructed in such a way that things which seem to be praised are condemned and things which are to be condemned are praised. The actual import of the verse is that one must see the form of Govinda in one at all wants to forget. Sorry. The actual import of the verse is that one must see the form of Govinda if one at all wants to forget the nonsense of material friendship, love, and society. Srila Rupa Goswami has similarly described the transcendental nature of relishing topics that, which concern Krishna. A devotee once said, quote, It is very astonishing that since I have seen this personality of Godhead who is washed by, my, by the tears of my eyes, there is shivering of my body and he has made me a failure in executing my material duties. 
Since seeing him, I cannot remain silently at home. I wish to go out to him always, unquote. The purport of this statement is that as soon as one is fortunate enough to contact a pure devotee, one must be anxious immediately to hear about Krishna, to learn about Krishna, or in other words, to become fully Krishna conscious. Similarly, there is a statement about hearing and chanting the Maha Mantra. Quote, it is said that saints have been able to hear the vibrating strings of the Veena in the hands of Narada, who is always singing the glories of Lord Krishna. Now, this same sound vibration has entered my ears, and I am always feeling the presence of the Supreme Personality. Gradually, I am becoming bereft of all attachment for material enjoyment. Unquote. Again, Srila Rupa Goswami has described Mathura Mandal, quote, I remember the Lord standing by the banks of the Jamuna River, so beautiful amid the Kadamba trees, where many birds are chirping in the gardens. And these impressions are always giving me transcendental realization of beauty and bliss, unquote. This feeling about Mathura Mandal and Vrindavan, described by Rupa Goswami, can actually be felt even by non-devotees. The places in the 168-square-mile district of Mathura are so beautifully situated on the banks of the river Jamuna that anyone who goes there will never want to return to this material world. These statements by Rupa Goswami are factually, factually realized descriptions of Mathura and Vrindavan. All these qualities prove that Mathura and Vrindavan are situated transcendentally. Otherwise, there would be no possibility of invoking our transcendental sentiments in these places. Such transcendental feelings are aroused immediately and without fail after one arrives in Mathura or Vrindavan. In these statements about devotional service, sometimes it may appear that the results have been overestimated, but actually there is no overestimation. Some devotees, as revealed scriptures give evidence, have had immediate results by such association, although this is not possible for all. For example, the Kumaras immediately became devotees simply by smelling the incense in the temple. Bilva Mangala Thakur simply heard about Krishna and then immediately gave up his beautiful girlfriend and started out for Mathura and Vrindavan, where he became a perfect Vaishnava. So, these statements are not overestimations, nor are they stories. They are actual facts, but are true for certain devotees and do not necessarily apply to all. These descriptions, even if considered overestimations, must be taken as they are in order to divert our attention from the fleeting material beauty of the, to the eternal beauty of Krishna consciousness. And for a person who is already in contact with Krishna consciousness, the described results are not unusual. Some scholars argue that simply by following the principles of Varna and Ashram, one can gradually rise to the perfections reached by practicing devotional service, but this argument is not accepted by the great authorities. Lord Chaitanya also condemned this idea while he was talking with Ramananda Roy about the gradual development of devotional service. He rejected the idea of the importance of Varnashram Dharma when it was put forward by Ramananda Roy. He said that this advancement of Varna and Ashram is merely external. There is a higher principle. In Bhagavad Gita also, the Lord says that one has to give up all other principles of elevation and take simply to the method of Krishna consciousness. That will help one in achieving the highest perfection of life. In the 11th canto, 20th chapter, verse 9 of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord himself says, One should execute the prescribed duties of Varna and Ashram as long as he has not developed spontaneous attachment for hearing about my pastimes and activities." Unquote. In other words, the prescribed forms of Varna and Ashram are ritualistic ceremonies of religion intended for economic development, sense gratification, or salvation. All of these things are recommended for persons who have not developed Krishna consciousness. In fact, all such activities are recommended in the revealed scriptures only to bring one to the point of Krishna consciousness. But one who has already developed spontaneous attachment for Krishna does not require to execute the duties prescribed in the scriptures. <laughs>